Hello there. We're going to take our first look at using keyboard events now because they're going to become very important as we start doing buffs and perks and enhancements in our game. Best bet is probably to do this in the new FLA just for now. Just while we cover the basics we'll have <coughs> a new flash file. Now the contents really don't matter, the size and the colour, we'll just trace stuff I think. So I'm going to do all the, the script in the keyframe on the timeline there. So let's comment in, uh, make use of the keyboard. If you're watching this video you don't have to have done all the ones before it to make some sense from this one. I will towards the end go back into the game script though and just start incorporating this. First step is to add an event listener. if I could spell it as well. The problem here is that um, with the keyboard, <coughs> in order to process a keyboard event, the object you're adding the event listener to needs focus. Focus basically means that it was the last thing that was clicked on or that it's been told that it's the focus of the SWF. And a way around that is just to add your event listener to the stage every time. So we'll add an event listener to the stage. Stage dot add event listener open brackets and this time we're using a keyboard event and there are various well there's two keyboard events the first one we use is a key down you can probably guess what the other one's going to be I'll give you a clue it's not key left or key right we'll have a function name we'll just call it key pressed And we'll make that function. So make the key pressed function. <coughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a cough for some reason. It's not a serious one, it's just tickling my throat all the time. Function key pressed. And this time it's responding to a keyboard event, so I'm going to use a lowercase k. I just try to keep it relative to the event it's using. And in the function here, for now, if we just trace, press the key and test the file, just go to town on your keyboard, you can see that we've pressed a key. Very boring. We want to know what key was pressed, so instead of tracing press the key, we can make use of the key code that was used. And to access it, we need to use this this parameter, this argument of the function. So if we do k dot key code is the one we're after. Test that. Press a key. So I just pressed the B key there and I got 66. There are certain keys that um, are shortcuts in Flash that don't work. So you can see, if you look at the top of the video there, I'm pressing the enter button and instead of telling me what I'm pressing, it's um, using a keyboard shortcut. It might be doing both, actually. Let's just check if I scroll this. No, it wasn't doing it. So because I was using a keyboard shortcut of Flash, it wasn't tracing out the results. So we'll have a look at fixing that now. If we run the file again, come up to the top, go to Control, and we can disable keyboard shortcuts. Do that, click back on the SWF and I can now press the enter key and we can see that the key code is 13. Quite useful to know. There are various other keys, I think A is one of them, you can't press A without doing that. So that's the key code. If you want to string value from that, you can change it ever so slightly. If we do string dot from char code <coughs> not showing me my options, it's weird that. From char code is a function of the string class. We open brackets there and put k.charcode this time instead of key code. So that should trace out a letter. If we press say G, we get G. If we do a uppercase G, press shift and we get a space traced out because a shift key doesn't actually have a, 
a string value. So that's tracing out the actual code. We'll make use of that in the game because we, we want to respond to certain keys being pressed. We could use key codes for it, but I actually want a visual representation of the key that you pressed. Um, it's hard to show you because I don't have the demo file, but when you press a key, it stores it up in the top right as a display, so it shows that you've pressed the S key or the D key. Other things we could do, we could get rid of this trace. Actually, we'll keep the trace, we'll just do an if around it. I'm going to change the content here. So above the trace, I'm going to say only trace if the spacebar was pressed. So we need an if, and we're saying if k.keycode. Now, luckily, I know the key code of the spacebar, it's 32. But don't worry if you don't know all the key codes, there is a way around it. We'll just do it this way first. We'll trace space pressed. Test the file. Press the space bar and get space pressed. Now, no one's expecting you to know all the key codes. There are various ways you could find them. You could look them up online, They're generally just the ASCII codes. You could go to Flash's own help, the ActionScript live docs. Or we can just make use of the keyboard class by doing keyboard dot and using various constant variables there, constant variables, constant properties by doing keyboard dot space and it'll go blue if it exists. For example, shift works. I think enter works. So if we do space, test it, press the space bar and we can see that it, that's worked fine. This also works for letters as well. So if I do keyboard dot a, change space to say a pressed. See that when I press a, I guess a isn't one of the keyboard shortcuts, or is it? Yeah, it still works. <laughs> this won't matter when you actually export your SWF and play it online. The keyboard shortcuts only work while you're within the Flash environment. You can have a big chain of these ifs. So let's uh, just copy it, do a different one. Let's go with left, so if you press the left arrow, useful for platform games and stuff. Press the left arrow, see left arrow was pressed. You can still do the A one as well, so I just pressed A. If we go down the traces, you can see that A pressed is up there. All very boring, let's try and tie it into our game. Uh, but just quickly, for those of you watching who aren't following this tutorial series, just want to know how the keyboard works, there's the opposite to the K down, key down, is if you paste that in and change down to up, and use a different function name, so I'll do key released, you can respond to keys being released. So let's copy that, paste the function, just change the name, Update this comment. And just to show you here, we can use pretty much the same logic. We can say we could trace key was released. There you go, when I release a key. It shows that it was released. If I use one that has a a bit of script to it. If I press and hold my left key and go to my trace, I should really expand my trace box when I do stuff like this. I held my left arrow in. Notice that the key down function triggers lots of times when you hold the key. It's not just when you first hold it, but it's also not, it doesn't trigger every frame that you're holding it. It's, it's based on the speed that your keyboard repeats keys. So for example, I hop into my actions and just go to a new line and hold my S key. You can see that after a while it repeats S's a lot of time. It doesn't do it every frame, it's based on the way you've set your keyboard up. And that's what this function does. That key pressed will trigger every time based on the, the, the repeat speed of your keyboard. Whereas released will only happen when you actually let go of the key. Just something to bear in mind. I'm going to get rid of the released one because it doesn't really matter for the sake of the game, at the moment at least. 
what we'll do is we'll edit these a little bit. So we'll use A, S and D as power-ups for now. We'll say in here we want to do, let's say, increase ship speed, increase firing speed, increase firing speed buff, let's say S. What can we have for S? Increase amount of shots. And finally, let's do increased defense. Buff. So, three potential perks, buffs, enhancements for the turret in our game. I'm going to copy everything we've got here and fudgify it into our level. Yes, that was fudgify, that's a real word. Start by pasting it into the constructor just so the um, the event listener's there. We might need to move it because, uh, as I'll explain in a minute, there's a chance that won't work from there. Make sure I've got all this function. Got that. Paste it just underneath the constructor. It's not too far away. And make sure it's tabbed appropriately. Make it protected. And I'm probably going to have to import this keyboard event. Let's just save and test the game to see if it flags me for it. Yeah, we get an error. Because it doesn't know what a keyboard event is, and that's because we haven't imported it. Go up to the top here. We'll import flash.events.keyboard event. Save it and test it. It doesn't like keyboard either, so we'll have to import keyboard. I'm trying to think which. Uh, can't think where keyboard is found. Flash. Dot. Let's have a look through them. What would it be in? UI. Dot keyboard. What a good guess. And it finally runs. If we get to the game, let's see if it throws the error I'm expecting. No, it hasn't. So we should be able to press ASD and we can see that we get the traces that we, we coded in. So I pressed all three of them. First one should increase our speed. We haven't coded that, obviously. We'll do that later. Amount of ships. Amount of ships? Amount of shots, that should be. We don't want a buff that increases the amount of ships. That's no good for us. Let's just edit that. Amount of shots. And that should be D. A, S and D. The problem I was anticipating is that the stage doesn't always exist in the constructor of a, a class. Because um, an object only gets access to the stage once it's actually been added to the stage. So we could have guarded against this. We could have, <coughs> we could have um, listened out being added to the stage. Once an object gets added to the stage, it has access to the stage. So we could do add event listener event dot added to stage and have a function called init for initialize. Cut the keyboard stuff and make a protected function called init. Protected function init responding to an event, paste what we've cut, and that would work because we can guarantee that the, the stage exists after we've been added to it. Let's just quickly check it and I'll leave the video there. Seems to work. Yeah, and my keys still work, so that's good. So we're in a position where we can do buffs next time. I'll leave it at that for now. Bye.